Dylan, first of all, congratulations on the award. How does it feel to be uh, recognised by your peers? Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's... Um... It's great to be honest, even though I took a little bit of stick, um, I'll be honest, but no, it is, it is nice. Um, I'm not really one for personal praise, um, so I do feel a little bit uncomfortable, kind of, as I've said before, but it's, um, it is a nice achievement and, and something that it's nice to kind of have for my career as I move forward um, as well, really. It's come towards the end of a, a very busy year. Your, your first one as uh, head groundsman at Doncaster Rovers. What uh, what have you made to the challenges that this year's thrown up in terms of the events that, on the pitch as well as the football and the rugby and all of that as one big package? Yeah, it's it's been challenging, but it's it's been hard at times. But it kind of as we've come out of it now, it's a real sense of achievement that we've come out, we've still come out of it, and you can as you can see behind us, we've still got lots of grass, which is kind of a big aim as we went through so in July obviously we had the the concert um, which feels a lifetime ago now um, and that was a difficult stage with um, kind of coming through that and the football season starting two weeks late in a rugby game seven days later but we always planned for a lot worse than what it was so it was almost a sense of achievement that we was kind of ahead of where we wanted to be straight away um, and the club were very supportive kind of within me within us and and the playing surface as well um, with that and gave us everything we needed um, at the time to help get through and then kind of September felt relatively quiet um, even though it wasn't really with the Dons getting through to the the playoffs um, as well and then October we obviously we had the Rugby World Cup and Samoa training at the training ground as well as well as the first team so it's been busy but it's it's been enjoyable and you know these are the reasons why we work for this club particularly because it's not just football we've got a wide range of events and it's great to be a part of really. Just going back to some of them events I imagine that when those covers came off after the concerts that the second one in particular a few nervy moments for you? Uh, well, to be honest the covers when they came off on the, the Sunday after it was a sigh of relief because it was green um, and then 24 hours later the, the metal flooring came up and and it was, yeah, a little bit of a head scratching because we planned for kind of every scenario, but didn't plan for it to be 38 degrees at 11 o'clock at night when the flooring went down. Um, but no, we, yeah, it was a little bit nerve-wracking, a little bit stressful, but we kind of took our time with it and didn't really rush any decisions that we did um, with the works. So we didn't want to take too much out, which would then leave us in a tricky position. So it was being patient, but being efficient at the same time, really. You must have been pleased then with the, with the state of the pitch on that first game of the season, um, in the first game of the season here anyway, in, uh, in August. Yeah, yeah. Um, nobody could really tell there was a concert on, um, really, up until maybe the six-yard box um, in the north end. So it was nice to kind of still get them first day comments, really, because it was a little bit nerve wracking going into it. Um, but yeah, it was a relief, really, that everything came through okay. I, I imagine it's been a year where you've learned an awful lot and that'll, that'll stand you in good stead going forward because we know as a club, this is that's the kind of the busy calendar that we want throughout the year with not only the football and, and the rugby, but events, other games, and, and things like that as well. Yeah, it's been a great experience, and with kind of as a team, as, as a team as a club um, we've kind of all got that experience and we've all reflected upon a different events and made sure that anything that we did need to tweak event to event that we have done um, and that's across all different departments working with each other um, as well and it's just making sure that future events we can make sure it's profitable um, and what we can do to make it more profitable and then more efficient for the club um, as well. You touched on it when you mentioned Samoa down at the training ground. I think people probably take for granted that you're not only looking after this pitch, but there's a vast number of pitches down at Cantley Park that you've also got to keep an eye on as well. And they've got to be up to a standard uh, that, yep. that suits as, as just as good as what, what this pitch is here. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a tricky time, that really, with the, the first team training pretty much at the same time. So we was fortunate that the weather was extremely kind to us because we did have it kind of in our office where we was like, frost colours might be out and it's going to be one of them awkward months um, really but no we, we kind of got through it and um, 
with the manager at the time you know it was planned all planned um, ahead and then obviously Danny coming in midway through was was great with us nice clear communication of exactly what he wanted of us um, while Samoa were there and kind of then as they left what he expected of us coming out of that as well so yeah we, it was difficult but we got there in the end Perhaps another thing people take for granted is the how a, a different head coach or, or manager can can be from from the the one previous. Uh, how, how has it been under Danny? You mentioned it's been good in terms of clear communication, but in terms of what is asked for you and, and changes that have been made. Yeah, so I think kind of straight away he's changed the training schedule throughout the week. So that's been different and probably a change in routine has been good um, through all. But it's a little bit more more challenging. Um, he's asked a little bit more, although I won't give away his tactics. Um, but no he's great he's, um, I've spoke to him a few times and kind of any problems you know he, he doesn't rant and raid he, he respects us and it, that works both ways um, as well and kind of throw cops into that that mix as well who's been who's been great and understanding and it's kind of a nice go between us um, and the first team playing staff as well What are the challenges going ahead now I think people can probably see on this video the, the sky moody sky in the background the weather's turning props later than what you'd normally expect but what the challenges going ahead for you to to keep the pitches in as good a condition as possible yeah so kind of the challenges is just it's more important on the timing of the jobs that we do now more important than actually getting the task done um, sometimes we may leave tasks half done because it's not worthwhile for the pitch so it's just constantly monitoring the weather which is very inconsistent and the forecasts aren't great um, you know we can have three different ones up and they're all saying different things um, so it's keeping on top of of the weather really and just only doing things when we need to do things um, is important and just hopefully keep on top of our good nutrition um, programme that we've got and we've got some really good suppliers that that help us out with that so just making sure that everything ticks along um, nicely just keeping an eye on the weather really is the big one as we're heading through the winter What represents a good winter for you when, when you come out of the other side of it and you're getting into spring the weather's picking up a little bit um, It's hard I don't think there's such a thing to be <laughs> honest but it's kind of you want to get through to March and if we've still got a lot of grass then and we're kind of like, yeah, we, we've done okay here. And kind of we've got no snowy or frosty fixtures or even heavy, heavy rain. If we've kind of got through without any of those, then we're usually okay, which I think we will do this year. Because like last year with the fixtures, we had a lot of games in December. I think we had a Saturday, Tuesday, then a Saturday. Whereas this year, we haven't got that. So we've been lucky with the fixtures, but the World Cups, obviously, Um affected that and it's a lot nicer that there's less Tuesday night games so the turnarounds and recovery times are a hell of a lot more than what they had done in previous years as well Just finally how do you reflect on your, your first few months as head groundsman here have you, are you still very much enjoying it? Yeah it, it's great um, it's everything that I expected it to be it's it's challenging but it's very rewarding um, as well we've got quite a few members of staff um, in my department as well that's joined and they've kind of really come in and improved our own standards as well and helped really fit into the culture that the club and our, my own department we're trying to create so yeah no it's it's good there's still a long way to go but um, yeah we're happy with the progress that's been made so far <laughs>